Jeff Kinley, you were one of the first names I thought of over the weekend when this invasion uh, from Hamas into Israel unfolded for a variety of reasons. Uh, but as a as a prophecy expert, and I just want to mention this, we're going to get into it after you host a show, a great show called Prophecy Pros Podcast. You also have um, a litany of books, but the latest is God's Grand Finale, where you talk about a lot of these end times themes. But as a prophecy expert, what has been going through your mind since seeing the news on Saturday morning? Well, I'd just say this. We were scheduled to fly into Tel Aviv and, and right this moment that you and I are speaking. And so that that was the first thing on my mind is that, well, uh, God's timing and, and just protecting us uh, from getting there. But um, I think to me, Billy, it's really just confirmation that we're living in the last days. I mean, the Bible prophesies so much about Israel, conflict in Israel, wars and rumors of wars that are going to take place, earthquakes that are happening right now. All these things that are happening are the precursors, I believe, to the actual end times events that we see in, in Revelation uh, chapter 6 or 18. So in my mind, it's just more confirmation uh, that we're living in very volatile times, but times that are very prophetic as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are a lot of people right now who are watching this and they're curious. They want to understand the history. And we're going to get into a little bit of that. We can't tackle all of it. It's a very deep and long history. Um, but about this land, about this area, about this conflict, what do you say to those who they watch these events and they say, oh, well, there's always conflict. There's always things going on. You know, this has nothing to do with the end times. They just sort of, not that, not that this definitively does, you know, but they just sort of dismiss it outright. What do you say to those people? Well, I'll just say this, that all the events in the past 2,000 years have been in the context where there hasn't been a nation Israel. And now that there is a nation, they're in the land, uh, there's been nothing but conflict since then because uh, Satan and those surrounding nations do not want them to occupy the land that God promised uh, to Abraham. And so there, there's been constant conflict. I mean, Satan is very territorial. And then God promised that land to uh, to Abraham. And so I think that's one of the things that really is a telltale sign. It's like this, Billy. I say that when your check engine light comes on in your car, you really need to pay attention to that. Well, God's flashing the check engine light on history and on the nations right now, and particularly Israel. So we do need to pay attention to it. Yeah. And, you know, we can't get into every event, but there, there's such a complex history. But there are a couple of bookend events in recent history, and you just sort of mentioned one of them is distant history. It's AD 70 and the siege of Jer Jerusalem, and this is when Rome came in. Um, let's let's talk about that event in 70 AD because it was a really defining event for Jerusalem and for the Jewish people. Can you take us through what happened in the year 70? Yeah, basically, Rome sent the general General Titus uh, into Jerusalem. He laid siege to Jerusalem for many months, eventually conquering uh, Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. He, he burned the the temple, as Jesus uh, declared in Matthew twenty four. Not one stone was left upon another. You can go there today and see the remnants of that. Uh, but that basically caused the Jews to um, uh, to be expelled from that area. There were about ten thousand that were slaughtered immediately right there on the spot. And then in one thirty five A.D., all the Jews were basically banned and banished from the land. So it was a very significant event, Billy, because what that did was that ended up dovetailing into 2,000 years of history of the Jews being scattered to some 70 nations all across the world. So the fact that the Jews would come back to their land after 20 centuries being scattered to 70 nations is really the miracle on the Mediterranean, as it's been called. And no other people group has ever done that in history. And yet it happened to the Jews just as God predicted. And it happened not all that long ago. We go to this other bookend event. You know, I mentioned there were two. We talked about 70, you know, jumping ahead to 1948 when Israel comes back on the map. And this was a monumental event. Talk a little bit about the significance of this. You just spoke to it a little bit, but, you know, there were a lot of people waiting for this event. Some thought it would never happen. And yet 1948. Yeah, well, God had predicted this uh, several times. In fact, it's been said that every Old Testament prophet besides Jonah in some way predicts the regathering of the Jews uh, back to the Holy Land. The reason why this is so significant is as we look to the end times prophecies that in the book of Revelation and Daniel, even in the Second Thessalonians and Paul and First John with the Antichrist, none of these prophecies can really take place unless 
Israel's in the land. So you sort of have a, you know, a step one and a step two. Well, step one has to be Israel uh, being a nation again. And then step two can happen, which is all the end times prophecies. So the precursor for these prophecies happening is the Jewish people being back in the land. And up to half of the Jews and the whole world now are back into uh, Israel. Again, that's just a, a supernatural gathering together that simply cannot be denied. Yeah, and I want to talk a little bit more and a little bit about that because, you know, again, a lot of time passed in between there, and there were probably times that people thought, huh, how can any of this possibly happen? Because it's not making any sense. The events aren't lining up, and yet here we are where the events are now lined up. But but talking about the Old Testament in particular, uh, when it comes to 1948, you mentioned lots of conversation and prophecy in the Old Testament. What do you find to be the most compelling and interesting prophecy there in the Old Testament when it comes to that regathering of Israel? Well, it's just the fact that that the Jewish people had a relationship with God, the nation of Israel, rather. And God told them, if you obey me, then I'll protect you. Everything will be fine. But if you disobey me, I will scatter you to the nations. So once again, we have the apologetic or the credibility of of the Word of God. I mean, everything God has said about the the Jewish people in the Old Testament uh, will come true and has come true, including this regathering. Another thing that he says, though, in in the Old Testament is that first they're regathered physically as a nation, but then they're going to be awakened or born again, if you will, uh, spiritually as well. Uh, at the end of the tribulation period. I love what the book of Isaiah says in, in Isaiah chapter uh, chapter 66 and verse 8 says, Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Can a nation be born uh, in a day? Uh, can a nation be brought forth all at once? And of course, in one day, May 14th, 1948, it all came together. So it really ought to cause us in a day, Billy, when none of us are really wowed or amazed at anything, this should amaze us that these ancient prophecies have come true in modern times and we can watch it in real time happening. I mean, if you were to get a statistician in here to say, you know, hey, here's here are the chances that this country from 1900 years ago that's been off the map would come back on the map at any point, it would almost be zero percent, essentially, the chances of that. And yet, these events are happening. And this current conflict is part of this land conflict. And also there's definitely obviously a spiritual element to this, but this conflict that has been going on, you know, for, for decades now, the, the modern version of it. But, you know, Ezekiel, I want to read Ezekiel 36, 24, because I, I find this really compelling. It says, you know, for I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. And you you read scriptures like that written thousands of years before 1948. Now, there may be some people who say, no, 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 that's referring to something else. Another event that already happened. Is there any other event that that could be referring to? No, there's there's literally nothing. And you can trace through all of history in the past 2,000 years since the Jews were expelled from the land, and we can't find anything in history that even remotely comes close. Now, there was in the 19th century uh, the Zionist movement that began sort of a gradual trickle uh, back into the land, but the land was just unproductive. It was full of malaria and, and weeds, and there were no trees in the land because trees were, were taxed. And so it was just a desolate place. But in the grand sovereignty of, of the way that God does things, God used the Holocaust and to create really a sympathy worldwide for the Jewish people. And that contributed to her being able to be declared a state once again on May 14th, 1948. So you really can't find anything else, but May 14th really becomes that birthday, if you will, the modern birthday of the nation Israel. Now, I mentioned, obviously, Ezekiel 36. The chapters that follow, you have Ezekiel 38, and this is something you and I have talked about many times, but I do want to bring it up because, you know, obviously that regathering happened and is continuing to, to happen. People are continuing to come back into Israel. But in Ezekiel 38, you have this conversation about Gog of the land of Magog. And this is the one of the pieces that a lot of prophecy experts will debate over and argue over. But this, in your view, has not yet happened, this invasion, correct? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's a coalition of nations that are surrounding Israel uh, in the book of, of Ezekiel that essentially come against Israel, including Russia coming down from the north. So there's this alliance that's made between all of these nations. And by the way, every single one of them is a Muslim nation, with the exception, of course, of Russia. They all come together and they have a launch of a, an attack against Israel uh, in a day. 
And the Bible uh, describes that, that it's going to happen in the latter days. It, it happens during a time when there's uh, there's a sense of, of peace and security in, in Israel and in the land. They're living in, in cities, unwalled cities that are unprotected. Well, obviously, this invasion has not happened. There's nothing in recorded history uh, because it couldn't have happened before 1948 because there was no Israel. And since 1948, it certainly hasn't happened as well. So it has to be some future date. Uh, many Bible scholars place it around the time of the beginning of what's known as the tribulation period, sometime after the rapture. Uh, but we don't know the exact date. We just know that it's going to come sometime in the latter days. But it certainly hasn't happened yet. So we're just we're still waiting on that prophecy. And we're, and we're waiting to see some peace before that happens, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. Daniel 9, 26 and 27 speaks of the Antichrist striking a peace treaty in Israel. Now, here's what's very interesting right now. Right now, we've there has just been created a war in the Middle East. Uh, there is more volatility. Uh, we don't know what else is going to happen in this war, how bad it's going to get. But at, at any time, if someone stepped in right now and just brought complete tranquility uh, to those raging seas of war, that person would be hailed as the Messiah, as a supernatural sage, as a prince of peace, if you will. And the Bible says, and finally, in the last days, that's going to happen. So I really do see this war as contributing to that boiling cauldron of the Middle East uh, that will boil to an overboiling point that the Antichrist will eventually come in and bring peace to that. So yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but certainly is making those preconditions ready for that war. And, you know, a lot of these events, obviously, nobody knows the day or the hour. In your view, based on your study of prophecy, what we can know in terms of what do you think the next event on the prophetic timeline is, the next definitive event that you think would, would happen based on what you see in Scripture? Well, as you, as you trace through Bible prophecy and the prophecies that relate to the end times, uh, there's one kind of hinge catalyst event that we're waiting on, and it's called the rapture of the church. And I believe that rapture event takes place at the beginning, right before the beginning of the tribulation period. Uh, there are no dates to that. There, there are no real uh, timings that we can attribute to that. It's what we call uh, the doctrine of imminency, meaning it could happen at any time. Uh, but we don't believe the church, the bride of Christ, is going to be suffering through God's wrath during the tribulation period. So I see that as the very next prophetic event. And then the one right after that, at some point, whether it's weeks or months, will be the signing of that peace treaty with Antichrist that will officially begin the seven-year clock of the tribulation period. So I want to talk before we go about your book, God's Grand Finale, because this is a book that takes us into Revelation, and which you mentioned earlier, obviously, the events that happen in Revelation, Israel being present, uh, those events are dependent on that. Uh, talk a little bit about the book and how it might be able to help guide people through some of these subjects. Well, what's very interesting is when you read back in Psalm 46 and uh, Jerusalem is about to be sieged by Assyria, uh, God tells uh, the Israeli people to be still or to cease striving and know that I am God. In other words, in the midst of a world coming unglued, what I want you to do is to know that I'm God. Well, that's what the whole book of Revelation does for us and what I talk about in my book, God's Grand Finale. It basically is a, is a deep devotional guide into who God is. So in Revelation, Billy, you not only get the events of the end times, what's going to happen at the end of the world and beyond, but God also wanted us to know who he was and how we can really know him and cling to him during times that are very, very threatening and unsettling. Well, and right now, a lot of people, just as a final question, they are watching what is happening. And a lot of Christians are feeling unsettled and fearful. They're wondering, how does this fit in? What's going to happen next? Even on the practical sort of matters of what other countries get involved in this, what would be your message to people who might be panicking or very fearful right now in light of what they're watching happen in the Middle East? I would say go to Revelation chapter 4, and in Revelation 4, John sees a throne. He sees that God is in charge of everything, even though the tribulation is about to start in his narrative, that God is on his throne, that all is well, heaven never panics, never dials 911, never meets an emergency session, and that we can rest in that sovereignty. And as one woman very appropriately said, God's sovereignty is my serenity. Let that control that God has in heaven be your serenity in, during these times. That is a powerful message. The book is God's Grand Finale. As always, Jeff Kinley, appreciate you breaking down all these issues for us. Thank you so much, Billy. Good to be with you.